I recently showed you a new machine learning application called ChatGPT, which can do things like write original poetry or make up a bedtime story or compose an essay about anything you like. It can even write computer programs for you. In this video, I'm going to show you another application called GPT-0, which can tell you if something has been written by an AI or a human. GPT-0 was developed by a 22-year-old computer science student at Princeton University called Edward Tian. Before I begin, I just want to say that if you're a student of computer science, it's not just about writing code and knowing what's going on inside a computer. You should be aware of the social, ethical and legal implications of technology. These topics are required learning for most computer science courses, in recognition of the impact on society of emerging technologies like artificial intelligence. Oxford University, for example, even runs an undergraduate course entitled Computer Science and Philosophy. And the European Union is working towards a new Artificial Intelligence Act that will regulate the use of AI in 27 countries. So, let's see what GPT-0 can do. If you're a teacher, no matter what your subject, you might find this useful. You don't need to sign up for GPT-0 just to try it out. All you have to do is copy some text into a box. I'll generate some text with ChatGPT first. I've already signed in. Let's try a typical secondary school English literature homework question. I want an essay about how the male characters are portrayed as irresponsible in An Inspector Calls. That looks pretty good to me. I would have liked to have seen a few more quotes from the book. I suppose I could have asked for that, but I'll go with this and see what GPT-0 can make of it. I'll copy the text. And paste it into this box. How it works is explained on the GTP0 website. It analyses the so-called perplexity of the text. It relies on the idea that sentences written by humans tend to be more random than AI-generated text. According to the website, human text includes unusual use of language in random clusters. They call it the burstiness of the text. AI-generated text, on the other hand, is more consistent. It's finished, so let's get the result. Balloons! Your text is most likely to be AI generated. So it called out ChatGPT. Well done. Well, let's see what it makes of some text that I wrote. I've been working on a video about data protection laws, which, as it happens, includes information about using AI for automated decision making. These are definitely my words. It's analysed my burstiness. Let's get the result. Your GPT-0 score corresponds to the likelihood of your text being AI generated. I don't know whether to be insulted or complimented by that. More data may be needed to determine if your text is human or AI generated. Try inputting more text. Well, I might have to do that, maybe later. But it succeeded in calling out the essay that was generated by ChatGPT, which I suppose is a good thing. So, what of the future? Well, the creators of chatbots like ChatGPT will no doubt strive to make them even more 
indistinguishable from people. And we'll see more applications like GPT-0 created in the name of combating plagiarism. Each will help the other to get better at what it does. Is generative AI a problem? I really don't think so. You might be old enough to remember when pocket calculators started to become popular in schools. A lot of mathematics teachers were very concerned that their students wouldn't have to think for themselves anymore. Word processors with their spelling and grammar checkers, not to mention the World Wide Web, got a similar reaction at first. But now, these are all indispensable tools for teaching and learning. Students are even allowed to take them into some of their exams. I think it's also important to realise that AI needs to be trained on high-quality language data, written by real people. Some researchers have suggested that this type of data is going to run out in only three or four years' time. When we start to train AIs with material generated by AIs, then, just like inbred animals, genetic abnormalities will start to emerge. We still need people to write original academic papers, novels, biographies and textbooks. I think it's likely that generative AI will become deeply embedded in the way that we learn, work and create. And because of it, education and the creative process will only get better.